nobody wanted to really really lush life in america they were like bleh, bleh, which happens to be one of my biggest songs today i think you're the first person i've ever had on this podcast that would honestly say and openly say they really? like you're doing it for fame yeah tell me about this new album it's super fun it's um i feel like it's a lot more dynamic than um poster girl and it has some ups and it has some downs and um yeah, it's just, it was really fun making it. I felt like we did it over a period of time with like a small bubble, like a group of people that just became, you just get to know each other really well, I think. And then from that, instead of having to do these speed dating like sessions, you, uh, you build something over a longer period of time and you you get to like try out different things and see what works and what doesn't work and then at the end of it you have an amazing collection of songs so you could just be like that song that song that song that song how do you know like where do you get the conviction from to pick those songs because there's going to be a lot of other forces saying zara mm -hmm. no that song like the creative conviction yeah that's true i do trust the people i have around me and i really trust my instincts like i think i have a good ear I really do think sometimes when you listen to a song, it's like why you add a song to your playlist. You know, you hear a song, you're like, wow, that's really good, add. Um, and it doesn't have to be harder than that. You don't have to like overthink and uh, analyze. What have you learned about that though? Cause you know, I've read about Uncover. Uh-huh, right. That was a good example of you following your own yeah. creative conviction, right? Totally. And um, that happened to a lot of songs. Like, nobody wanted to really, really lush life. In America, they were like, bleh, bleh, which happens to be one of my biggest songs today. Never Forget You wasn't, mm, 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 wasn't that exciting. Mm, mm, they didn't really like that one. And like, also, other songs, um, I remember being a little unsure of Symphony. I was like, I don't know, will that pop off? Like, I don't know, should I have it on my... And that also became one of my biggest songs. So I think it goes both ways. But when I really like something, I I really like it. And I think you just got to believe in yourself and um, in your taste. Because if I would just do stuff that I didn't really like or do stuff that I didn't like as good as something else, then might as well have somebody else do it, I guess, at the end of the day. Because I still want to do what I think is good. I want it to be me. Um, but then you're also battling with, like, coming back to Beyonce and, like, you know, if you want to live this life in fame and, and the limelight. And why are you doing it? Are you doing it for fame or are you doing it because of the art, you know? And then is... Why are you doing it? Is the art... I think a little bit of both. And um Because you can always have the the art, but the fame is not necessarily guaranteed, is it? Totally. So I think, yeah, if you're happy with what you release and you're like really proud of that, that's really what matter matters at the end of the day. Do you know what? I think you're the first person that I've ever had on this podcast that would honestly say and openly say, I'm sure the truth is pretty much everyone <laughs> yeah. would have said it but I don't think they would have been so honest. I think you're the first person to say really? that you're doing it for fame, yeah. I think both. But even think, no one would acknowledge yeah. that. Uh, right. The truth is they are. Of course, you unless know? they wouldn't be like unless in this chair. Were, you're a liar, <laughs> yeah, of course. You wouldn't be on a promo run. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you really but didn't it's care. it's just your honesty is quite refreshing. Yeah, I think it's necessary. Also for, um, what is I think that's why I'm like a happy person. Like I am very honest and I think, I analyze and I think a lot about like, my thoughts and my um myself and why i do certain things and the purpose of certain things and if you're just like honest with yourself about things then you're not like you're living in your truth and i think that is the ultimate way of of living and then i can know sometimes like why i'm doing certain things but at least i know that and like i am honest with myself about it I guess, I guess that's what it is. Your newest single, Can't Tame Her? Yes. 
been listening to that in my little office over there, mm-hmm. spinning it over and over again just to get a feel. Mm-hmm. How's it going? So far, so good. Yeah, I feel like it's um, really fun to start off the new year with that song. It's really fun to start off the new year with music in general. But that one's really like, woo, you know, it's uh, it's like a little 80s banger and quite different from the rest of the album. I would say all the songs are quite different from the rest of the album. So I wouldn't really say like one song is speaking for, you know, the song sonically. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all like still pop, you know, but maybe they're cousins with each other. One song here and there but it's quite different. It takes you on a ride, on a journey. But Can't Tame Her is fun, it's energetic, it's very, it makes me feel confident. When you went into the studio this time around, yeah. what was the objective? You know, like, When I wrote that song? No, just the album. Um, what were you thinking like in terms of positioning, in terms of what you wanted to do and how you wanted it to be different from previous records? I just wanted it to be really good, honestly. Okay, so that it was just about I just want it to be good. Cause if you look at my Spotify list, it's it's like, it's a lot of stuff going on in there. <laughs> like, How do you know it's, what's the metric of measurement that will tell you that it's been really good? Um, I would say a single or a song is a hit above like 400 million streams. In what period of time? Maybe two years. But for you like- For me? For you on like a deeper- Yeah, what, I would say emotional like- Emotional level, what kind of- how you look back and go, that was a successful album. I think anything over maybe two billion streams is good. Yeah, that's really good. Sounds really good. I think that's good. Two billion streams is great. And um, yeah, everything above that. We sit here in 10 years time and you've been successful. I kind of know what the answer is, stadium tour. Mm-hmm. On the other foot, mm-hmm. we sit here in 10 years time and you've been unsuccessful in your own characteriz- characterization of what success is. Yeah. Maybe I'll just like redefine it. What does that mean? What would that look like though? What would have made you be unsuccessful in terms of what wouldn't you Well, have you know, I think it's just how you, va- how you value, or like, what you think success is because success could also just be like being happy and uh, it could be like having a family what is it for you and uh well i think it will change over the over the years right now it is to do really well in music and um to just make sure everyone around me is happy and that i'm happy but in 10 years obviously stadium tour wah, 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 maybe i would love to make a couple of movies this is the stadium tour album? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Um, I'll celebrate like 20, year, 20 years as an artist. There's something, something a little lame to celebrate like 20 years, as, like even to celebrate like 10 years as an artist, like have a 10 years as an artist concert, or like celebrate 20 years as an art. I don't know. There's something about that I don't like. But I... Um, Is that because it, you're, it means you're getting older? Or? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, actually. How do you feel about getting older? Um, I think I'm a little scared. But in general, to age, um, I think it's a beautiful thing. And I actually think being like 30 plus, 30, 40, I, for some reason, I think I'll be my happiest at like 40 or 50. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.